divine providence, Hashkacha Pratit. We've all heard the phrase. And the idea is certainly not new to Yiddishkeit or to the rest of the world's religions. The idea of a personal relationship and providence, seeing God's hand in our life, in our lives, seeing, hearing, experiencing events that are providential, that seem to be coming, being directed, being guided, being ordered by something higher than our own understanding. That's the basic idea. We're going to start with the Arizal's Eitzchayim, the first parak, the first chapter, after very many lengthy introductions. The Rav begins over here with Darush. Darush Igulim v'Yosher Bo Chamisha Anafim, an explanation of the Igulim and Yosher, which refer to the two lights that God used in the beginning of creation, which are roughly translated as the circular lights and the straight lights. There are five sections. The Indian Tachlit the Kavanasha Briat. This pen is a little goofy. תחליט הכוונה של בריאת העולם נבער עתה שתי חקירות נתעסקו בהם המקובלים. Subject is the intention of the creation of all the worlds and there are two areas of investigation that the, the Kabbalists have busied themselves. החקירה הראשונה, the first investigation who ma shehakru hakamim rishonim achronim ledat hibat priyat olamot? This is the investigation of the early and later wise men to know the reason for the creation of the world. The eizus siba. What reason hayta for God to create the world? Zvenim neu v'gamru v'gazru, and they were counted and completed and decreed. Omer ki sibat edavar haya lefi shahanaahu yidbarach muchrach shi'e shalem bechol pu'lotav. So the first idea here of the reason for God creating the world. Ki sibat edavar hi lefi shahanaahu yidbarach muchrach. Hashem himself, it is absolutely necessary that he is complete shalem bechol pu'lotav in everything he does. God doesn't do anything halfway. Ukochotav, and with all his power, Bukhal Shimotav, Shogadullah, and with all his holy names and all his power. Dola Maala Kovod, the Indian of his honor, and the greatness of his honor, but Im Lo Ayamotipulotav Kochotav Lide Poel. And if he had not expressed his power and his deeds, his actions, into the world, say, into the world of action, then God himself would not be called Shalem. In other words, God could have done everything except the physical world. He could have created everything except man. He could have done a lot of things. But without actually bringing it all into the physical realm of action, God himself would not be called complete. No matter how spiritual we might want to identify God as being, without physical action, he would not be called complete. Okay. And also with his actions and his names and his kinuim, his nicknames, the different names that we give him, Nora, Awesome, Wondrous, Mighty, etc. Those are called his Kinuim. Tihine Hashem Shuhu Ben Daladotziot. The great name of four names, Havaya, Yudke, Vavke, Nikra, Kain, Alhoraot, Havayotot. 
It is called, God's name of Havai is called to teach us about his mitziut, about his Havaya, about his, his existence. In other words, the name Havaya teaches about his existence, and it's Chit, which is eternal. The Kumo and he and is is established forever. Laad Laad forever. Raya Hovevi He was, he is, and he will be. Teran Habriya Ubizman Kiyum Abriya Uba Akhre it Habhu El Mashri Haya. And and during his creation, before it and at the end, this is a very interesting phrase here. Itabhu El Mashahaya until everything is turned over into what it was. Which means returning the creation back to a complete Ain Sof. If he had not created the world and everything that's in them, we could not see the truth of the teaching of his existence, his blessed existence, which is eternal. It being in the past, the present, and the future. So if we say that God is is Havaya, that necessitates past, present, and future. He is existence, and without those qualities, we couldn't call him Havaya. In other words, the name and the qualities are symbiotic. We need them. We need they they have to have both. They're dependent on each other. The chen shem adenut nikra al. And so who, whose name of Adenut is called so because of his master. He is the master. Ayotlo Avadim, and he has he has servants, Bahu Adon Alehem, and he is the master of them. And if he hadn't created them, Adon, then he God could not be called Adon if he had not created servants. And so too in all the other names. That God is called. These names refer to the actions that He performs, the relationships that He has with His creation. The chaim be'inyan akinuim kagon rachol v'chanun. So too with the the subject of His nicknames, calling Him merciful and graceful, erech apayim and long winded. Not long winded. That doesn't work in English, but <laughs> patient, shall we say? <laughs> I don't think we want to call God long-winded. That wouldn't work out too good. He couldn't be called these names if there weren't created beings in the world. And similarly, those other names. So again, for God to be complete, there has to be man to call him the names and the, and the, the nicknames and the, give him the qualities that we ascribe to him. 